why God loves us, isn't he? <laughs> well, let's, uh, let, let me go back over, uh, since you've been asleep, I know I'll finish up these few things on Daniel, why I believe God picked Daniel, then I'm going to share uh, how I got here and some other things. First of all, he believed in the sovereign God. He believed God was sovereign. Whatever God said, that was it for Daniel. That was the first thing. Secondly, he had a really disciplined prayer life. That was really important. You can see it all through the book of Daniel. Thirdly, we know he studied the word of God because he quoted from Jeremiah. He ta talked about that. So he studied the prophecies of Jeremiah. So we know that. So you think about that. Prayer and the word of God always go together. Acts 6, 4 says that. Romans 10, 17 talked about faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. John 15, 7, if you abide in me, my words abide in you, ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you, so done for you. He had, so he really believed in the word of God and prayer. Fifthly, he had an understanding of spiritual warfare because that chapter 10 was a key chapter about that. He understood that. And that we do too. We ought to understand that too. Six, he only wanted God to get the glory. That's where I think I finished up on last week. He wanted God to get the glory. He said there's a God in heaven, is what he told Bill, uh, at Nebuchadnezzar in uh, uh, chapter uh, 2. Uh, he talked to him about that. And Nebuchadnezzar finally understood that after he lived like an animal for a while. And then uh, Belshazzar, on the handwriting on the wall, he said the same thing to him. He, was, uh, he wanted him to know that God was to get the glory. He, he would tell him what the handwriting was, but God would get the glory. A lot different than a lot of uh, preachers are today. Pat, different religious leaders. They lift themselves up way too much, I think. So, and in seventh, he realized he had a work to do. He was like Joseph, I think. Uh, he's a real good, kind of a picture he and Joseph would go together. There's no record of him ever complaining about his life, and yet he was in captivity literally all of his life from the time he was a teenager until he died. He never got to go back to the, to the, the land that he prayed for and back to Israel. And seven, uh, eight, number eight, he was tactful and considerate. I'm still working on that, on ta being tactful, but I, I, I want to get that one of these days. Second Timothy 2.24 says this, And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. Remember when he was asked about the food, they had to eat the food, he said, Can you just let us be tested for, uh, well, I think it was seven days, wasn't it? And uh, the, he said it real nice. He didn't say, I'm not going to eat the food. He said, just let us try this and just see what happens. That's, so he was very tactful. Uh, we're, a lot of us are not that way. Number nine, he had insight, I believe, into human history. And the center of history is the nation of Israel. He knew they were the chosen people of God. John 4, 22 says, salvation is of the Jews. And we need to understand something, folks. God made a covenant with Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. And that covenant is still in effect. And that covenant blesses all of us. We're now in the times of the Gentiles, but these times are going to end. And God will reestablish his nation Israel. They'll, they'll be reestablished probably very, uh, in, in, in a quick, very quick time. And then lastly, Daniel lived up to his name. His name means God is my judge. And he never worried about all the kings, what they could or couldn't do for him. He delivered the message that God gave him and left the results up to God. So that's a real, no wonder uh, at the very end of Daniel it says, but as for you, go your way, the angel said to Daniel, go your way to the end, then you will enter into rest and rise again for your allotted portion at the end of the age. Boy, it's going to be neat to be with Daniel isn't it? and some of these other heroes of, of the faith. Well, I was, we were talking the other day, I was talking and to someone, and uh, they would ask me to share some of these things with you. Because you've got a comedian, that's good. And, and you, you know, they're going to tell you things, and, and they're, they're going to do a lot of work. But you have to understand something. You want God to pick you out somebody. No, you know, you're going to do everything you can do, the committee is. Here's what happened to me, for instance, when I went to the first church, I, the fir first real church I went to. I went to Canada. That was out of God's will. But I'm going to start with the church in Virginia. Uh, I, I had uh, I had uh, gone to do a funeral for my nephew who had died of a brain, of a brain dead tumor on his brain. He was very young, nine years old, wasn't he? Eight. eight years old. When I got there, I didn't even do the funeral. 
Isn't that something? Uh, his daddy decided he wanted to do the funeral. And so I just went. I met some people. And I met one lady who knew my sister who went to this little church that I ended up becoming the pastor of. It was, it was a mission at the time. And so this was years, a couple of years later. Uh, she called, They called and said, uh, they would like for you to send your resume. And all I could remember about that time was they had mosquitoes so big that they'd carry you off. I thought, I thought uh, there was rumors that they carried beagle hounds off and catch them out. But uh, mosquitoes, that's all I could remember about that. I thought, why would God want me to go clear over to the coast of Virginia? And uh, so Philip was, he heard me. He, heard, he said, Dad, I heard you say one time, you'd send your resume to anybody that asked for it. I said, I say that? He said, yes, sir, you said that. So I said, oh, okay. So I sent it. Didn't hear anything from them. And uh, so I, I passed it off. I didn't even think another word about it. I was back doing plumbing. Uh, I was preaching in churches here and there when I get a chance. And, and going out, I had worked in the bus ministry at a large church in West Nashville. And I helped out on that. And when I'm visiting a couple times a week, and I just resumed my Christian life waiting on God, you know. And uh, all of a sudden, this lady, one lady was on the committee, They'd looked at my resume before, but wasn't impressed with it. But she was couldn't sleep one night, and so she looked at my resume again, and, and she called up the pastor of the church that was the sponsoring church, and he was a, it was a big church, and he was a, on the foreign mission board at the time. And one of my references was Brother Jim Henry, who used to be at Two Rivers Baptist Church in Nashville, was now in, in First uh, Baptist of Orlando, and he was on that committee with this guy. Uh, and so she called him up. She said, and he said, well, I, I'm, I'm going to a meeting tomorrow. And I'll see Brother Jim tomorrow. I'll just ask Brother Jim about it. Well, Brother Jim really liked Patsy, and he really liked me too, but he really liked Patsy. <laughs> he thought Patsy was very spiritual. No, I, I was just kidding about it. He didn't think that. Patsy, only time she ever gave her testimony that I know of, that kind of a testimony was for him at a, at a Sunday night service with a thousand people there, I guess, wasn't it? A lot of people. Her mom and daddy came. I have never seen Patsy that afraid. But she went out there and gave her testimony. Because Brother Jim was a neat guy. But anyway, he gave Big Bill, Patsy, and I up. And so they called me up. I, I went out to this, uh, to, I talked with them first, and then they, they had us come out there. And I preached a message in the, this little church where it's just a small committee there. And a few people from the church over on this side, but I preached mainly to the committee. It was about eight, seven or eight people. And so they, they asked us to, to come and do a trial sermon. I did. I came and did that later on. And then they unanimously called us to come to that church. But that was just such a way out of the way thing. I mean, you think about that. Uh, I, was, I did not one single person in that particular town or church. And we go to this church. I remember I went right up to the church the first time. It, they had moved these buildings down from somewhere else. They had bought these buildings. They were sections, like barracks almost. And these folks had put it together. They had one guy, and they, they had three different colored roofs. And uh, I said, well, Patsy, here's our church. <laughs> you know, Patsy was scared to death, and she walked the streets for about two weeks, didn't she? Wouldn't even unpack her boxes. <laughs> uh, but uh, God surely did a great, great thing in that church. I've got pictures to show you. It's really something. As a matter of fact, in the pictures, Gary didn't recognize me. They didn't recognize me. I have really changed. And little Emma was in there, and she said, boy, you've really changed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's 40-something years passed for more than that. But uh, that's how I got to that church. And, and then, let take, let's go all the way to Fosterville. I mean, I've come, I've come back. I have retired, supposedly. And I put my resume in at all the associations in Telahoma and, and uh, up in McMinnville and down here. I had a good meeting with a guy down here that was a Powers was his name, I think. Yeah. Jim Powers. And he said, yeah, we'll get you some church. I just wanted supplies. All I just wanted to do, you know. Never heard a word. Never heard a word from any of them. And so I, I decided to substitute teach. So that's what I did for a bunch of years up there, four or five years, I guess. And preached once in a while I would get to preach, but I, I wasn't going to take a Sunday school class at Bel Air. Went to this big church. Bel Air was, was a pretty good size church. They'd asked me to do certain things. I said, no, I'm hoping God will let me preach some, you know. 
And uh, there it is. So finally, I just went on and took this Sunday school class. Well, you know what that class, they came one Sunday. It became a big class, you know. And Phil Huddleston was in that class, and he knew Gary and Faye. Said, I didn't know. He said, they got a church out in Fox, but they want you to come out and supply for them. I said, okay. <laughs> And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know where. I said, Foster, where is it? Pastor and I rode out here one Saturday. We almost passed through it. <laughs> you know, downtown Fosterville, it's just, it's not that much, really. <laughs> we took the Fosterville loop. You know that loop? <laughs> I thought that was really, you know, I like that. That was neat. The Fosterville freeway, I guess you could call it. But uh, so we came, and I preached that one time, and then y'all, they asked me to come and be the interim, you know. But I, I still just, Phil Huston, he worked it all out where I would teach the Sunday school class and still come out here. That was the deal. He worked that out, he thought. <laughs> well, it got to where, you know, the second time you called me back while you were still looking for a pastor, you know, you found a pastor for a few months and that didn't work out and then I, I came back. And, and, and the second time I came back, uh, it got to be where I was teaching out here, and preaching out here, and teaching on Wednesdays and Sunday nights, and then I would do the Sunday school class too. I couldn't remember which one I was teaching sometimes. <laughs> so I really just literally fell in love with y'all. This this church really it became you know a part of me. So I've been the permanent interim now for 13 years. <laughs> and something. I mean, y'all still haven't called me to be your pastor. <laughs> you have spiritually called me, but there, there has never been an official call. I used to tell people they can fire me anytime they want to, and I can walk away anytime I want to because we're, I'm just a permanent interim. Uh, Gary fired me the first time, but then he called me back too, said so he was one of the ones. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I say all that to say this do all the things that you have to do. But always leave it open to God. Because I listen, folks, no matter what, God literally called me to come out here. It was it was as much for me as it was for you. This has been uh, y'all have been a a just tremendous blessing in my life. And uh, I never thought that I would get to do this at this age. I mean, I didn't even think I'd know who I was at this age, but uh, <laughs> you know I, <laughs> But uh, it's just been a blessing. And so I, I, you know, I, want, you, I want you to hear, I, I've gone fast with that, but uh, I just didn't want I want you to see that God sometimes does things in very mysterious ways. He really does. So always leave it open to what the Holy Spirit can do because he's the one that will lead you to the right person. And you're the right person. Uh, it, it works, doesn't it? And God is really blessed. Listen.